How come in the big blue stage, during the loop-de-loop -loop section, the characters aren't affected by the change in gravity at all? While completely upside down, they're jumping like normal, while gravity pulls them upwards somehow? Or what's up with the clouds in the Magicant stage? This is the only surface where you randomly can get spiked right through the floor. It's not even consistent either, and not even other cloud stages work like this. Well, well, we're here again because there are even more weird things I've noticed in Smash Ultimate. Last time, we looked at unusual occurrences like how characters with masks and even robots are able to eat food, or how water-type Pokemon can barely even swim. Yes, welcome back to the series where we take a look at video games in a literal manner. This time, we're looking at 30 more things that don't make sense in Smash Bros. Ultimate. But before before we do so, I have a few more franchises I'm planning to cover in this series, so subscribe if you want to see those too, because I'm finding a lot of funny things in those games as well. Okay, on to the video. So the metal box item in this game turns any character into metal with a few different attributes, like weighing a lot more and your character doesn't talk now. So given that, how is Metal Jigglypuff still able to put people asleep by singing her song when she doesn't make any noise now? So then, what exactly is putting these players to sleep? And speaking of Jigglypuff, what is going on with her rest move? It is one of the strongest attacks in the game, yet to perform this incredible feat, all she does is just go to sleep. Just like, what? She takes a snooze in front of you, yet you go flying and even somehow grow a flower on your head too? How come all the items in the Smash Bros universe don't have any weight to them? I performed a very scientific test by using this scale, yet it didn't move at all. Even a giant hammer, heavy sandbags, or wooden crates are totally weightless here. Most characters that have a tether grab can also use that tether to grab onto the ledge as well. But it doesn't make sense how some characters can, while others can't. Like how is Luigi just not able Able to use his plunger on the ledge, that seems like a perfect fit. It even sticks too. But what's really weird is how Isabel has a fishing rod that she can use as a tether, yet Steve can't use his fishing rod. Where's the consistency here, eh? Another thing with the tethers is how do they stretch to pretty ridiculous lengths when grabbing the ledge? It could kinda make sense for the energy-based ones, but take a look at how big Ivysaur's tether is. Aren't these vines a part of his body? Weirdest of all though is the snake that Lucas uses. Diane Damn, now that looks painful for the snake to be stretched out like that. Brutal, man, especially when you see the actual size of it. What's with the water in the Hannonbow stage? It's all an illusion, you can't even swim in it at all. This is the only stage where the water acts like this. It's like Moses is parting the seas as you fall in it. As if this stage wasn't weird enough as is, now it has this going for it too. A lot of characters have reflectors in this game, and most of them make sense. But what about the ones where just some guy can kick back any projectile? Even the ability to kick back lasers, which are just light. Or even able to deflect balls of aura. So the real question is, what are these people's feet even made of? But let's take this up a notch here by looking at Villager now. It's one thing to be able to somehow reflect all these projectiles, but how are Villager and Isabel able to grab a projectile and place it in their pocket for later use? Like how does one pocket light sources, or even tornadoes? Or then there's literal thunder even, damn! What's with the ledges in the 75M stage? Certain characters just can't even grab onto something. Some of them. They'll just weirdly teleport back to a platform. Just look how ridiculous this looks. In one frame, you go from here to here. And that's not even mentioning how some platforms you can't even grab onto, while others you can, when they all look like the same platform on this stage too. In the Onet stage, how come there are only cars driving on the one street that you're fighting on? I mean, the rest of the city just looks like a ghost town, no cars or people in sight. And if this is the highway or something, then the question would be, why did you guys choose to fight on the one street with cars on it? But actually, I might have 
to take that back based on this next one. Because upon closer inspection, I noticed the cars don't actually hit the characters on this stage. The cars are clearly on the road while the characters are clearly on the grass. So is the wind from the cars so strong that they're getting hurt from that? The villager in this game is actually a remarkable gardener. He is somehow able to plant a tree, growing life, into any surface of his choice. I'm talking about metal surfaces with no sunlight or deserts where no other life forms can grow. So this guy is just a god in the gardening business. In the description of the Master Ball item, it says that only legendary or mythical Pokemon can be in the Master Balls. So then how come you can get a Goldeen or Zoroark from a Master Ball when they are both just normal Pokemon? Goldeen, I guess I can kind of see as like a troll, but then what's Zoroark's excuse? He's not mythical or legendary. What's going on here with Peach's counter? I've always wondered just what I was even looking at. First of all, Toad just appears out of nowhere. He's not even a human shield anymore, so Peach still takes the hit, but now without taking damage somehow. But weirder than that is when you perform the counter, just what is this odd green fog that you spit out? Is this acid or just supposed to be like Toad's bad breath or something? Cause I've never seen Toad do anything like this. How do all of these characters perform a variety of different moves while hanging on a ladder, even moves that require all four of your limbs to use, and yet you still cling on to the ladder somehow. Snake, I honestly didn't know you were this acrobatic until now, like jeez, that's impressive. Also, how come Snake C4 is totally indestructible? I mean, it's an explosive device, it should blow up with other explosives, but no. Regardless of how many explosions are near it, it'll just keep intact. What's weirder though is that Isabel also has this like explosive landmine, yet this can be triggered by just a simple hit from most of the cast when Snakes is completely unbreakable. Kirby has this pretty sweet move where you transform into some sort of rock which protects you from most hits, acting like some impenetrable fortress. Well, um, that is, unless you just grab him, which breaks this defense he created. So the rock protects him from giant sword swings, but if you go up and go boop, it breaks right through it. How come some characters can crouch walk or crawl while others can't? This one just seems really random as to who gets this strange ability. It's not even like it's based on a character's athletic ability or anything, because if Wario is able to waddle around like this, surely everyone else could do something similar. How does the Pokemon trainer, who's not even a fighter, really, survive all the different hazards from the many dangerous stages that the characters fight on? And does it all while just chilling on some random platform? In the Norfair stage, for example, there are constant lava waves, with one being so huge it damages all the fighters who aren't in this tiny little safe house, but Pokemon trainer is some sort of god now that swims right through the lava and and just chills in it. How does every character have the ability to phase their body right through various surfaces? Like floors of houses or grassy rock cliffs are not a problem. There's no consistency either, like how come I can phase through these wings of a plane but the center wing still remains solid? Just use whatever phasing powers you have on any surface. How come there's always a crowd cheering? Like every character gets a little chant, but where exactly is the crowd cheering them on? You could argue they're simply behind the camera, but if that's the case, how do they bring these crowds to such crazy places like a desert, a falling clock tower, or even outer space? And why does Krom have the coolest chant out of all the characters too? How is every character able to throw any other character extreme distances regardless of the size and weight of them? You'll have this tiny electric rat that can just yeet this giant turtle dragon across the stage. Or then there's just some kid who throws this fat alligator while only using a bug net. 
This next one is actually a complaint I have with this game, and it doesn't make sense either. And that is, how come there aren't any controllable final smashes anymore? Okay, there's a few minor controllable ones, like aiming a punch, but what happened to actually being able to play as Giga Bowser in Brawl, or control the actual Landmaster? Now they're all just cutscenes, which is cool sometimes, but not for every character. With Pokemon Trainer, how do the other Pokemon take damage when they're not even on the battlefield? Squirtle could be out here taking all the hits, going up to 100%, and yet when you change to Ivysaur, who's been chilling in his Pokeball the whole time, he'll be at 100% too and gets launched super easily. What's up with Mr. Game & Watch's throw? In an instant, he can crumple down any player into this tiny ball, and that's a scary enough ability as as is, but then these ball icons will always stay visible to the actual player. Even if a Nintendog is blocking your view, you'll still see your crumpled up player through the dog somehow. What is with the sides of these stages in Mario Bros or Balloon Fight? If you walk too far on one of the sides, then you'll teleport to the other side, but if you get knocked off, then you'll die instead. So is there a portal that works only sometimes? What's also weird is that if you push a character, you normally won't be able to get past him, unless you push him through these portals in which you do pass him. How is Dr. Mario not an Echo Fighter of, well, Mario? And we can see this by selecting the menu layout that stacks Echo Fighters on top of each other, yet Dr. Mario is still totally separate. Even characters that have about the same amount of similarities, or even less compared to Mario vs Dr. Mario, are considered Echo Fighters. These are like Ken and Ryu or Roy and Krom. Why is everybody so tiny when playing on the Pikmin stages? These are all obviously from the Pikmin games, where you play as a character half the size of a GameCube disc. So the only character to scale is Olimar, where whereas everyone else is smaller than a crab. And thanks for watching another one of these guys. Comment your suggestions below, and I'll see you next week.